where do I start? Um, okay, so first off, here is a knife box from Japan. And uh, this is a result of nearly a year of <laughs> a year of work. Um, so I've mentioned in a couple of the videos, I had a knife in the works and a number of knives in the works and a couple of them fell through and not because of anything that was bad necessarily, but what happened was a lot of these deals that came for me to launch my own knife brand or my own knife line was more of a licensing deal where I would just slap my name and my picture on a knife box and on a knife. Without sounding arrogant, I just wanted to keep myself in the overall creative process, not just in terms of selling the knives, but in terms of making and designing the knives. And so that's why this whole thing took so long. But we are here. <laughs> this is what I hope for is the final sample of a knife that is gonna be my very first knife that I will launch on my channel. Um, so hopefully by the end of this video, I can announce that we have a knife that will be available to ship in about three months, okay? You always get a nice envelope from Japan when you order something from there, and it's usually here. It's usually the invoice or something like that. <laughs> it says, Mr. Ricky Tran from... <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you who is from yet. Packing. All right, here we go. Ah. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm a little excited. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> okay, and we have two handles here. Um, these are basically these options that I have to install the knives with. And um, one is actually teak and the other one is black walnut, which I believe is actually on the knife right now. Yeah, these are both black walnut and it's very beautiful. So you got a really nice kind of two-toned dark brown and black. And then you have the teak, which is a more of a neutral. Now a teak, I believe has a very high concentration of oils. So it tends to be very antimicrobial and it doesn't warp over time. Like something you would see on like a maple or even walnut. And you know, going with ebony, ebony is very beautiful, but the price of ebony is so high that the handle itself would actually cost an extra 30 to $40 just for the handle. And so I wanted to avoid making the knives too expensive. And then the ferrules on both of the handles are buffalo or black buffalo. So very beautiful. But let's look at the star of today's video. Right off the bat, instead of getting into specs right away, this knife here is made by Sakai Takayuki. And for those who don't know who Sakai Takayuki is, it's one of the most famous knife makers in all of Japan in Sakai. When you're looking at Japanese knives, there's generally three classes of knives. You have your manufactured knives, you have your handmade knives, and then you have your artisan knives. The handmade knives and the artisan knives are made really by three or four people, or sometimes even one when you go to the artisan route. One person does the hammering, one person does the grinding, one person, does, uh, one person does the heat treatment or the handle install. And then your manufactured knives, even though they are touched by hand, they go through as many as 50 or 60 people by the time the knives are done. I decided to go for the non-manufactured route because I think that you know having a knife that was made by only just a very small handful of people is really special. I was able to get a hold of the folks over Sakai Takayuki and this is what we've got. Uh, again, I've had other samples from other manufacturers you know, made as well and they just, Something was missing in the translation. I don't know what it was, but a lot of the knives just didn't come out right. This knife here though, <laughs> I think this is production ready. It is beautiful. This is the final sample that we've got and it is just gorgeous. Uh, let me grab a KS really quickly and um, do a really quick comparison for you. All right, so here we are. This is the KS on my left and this is the, I guess the perfection knife on the right. And um, profile, very similar. There are a few things I actually changed to make this more of a user-friendly knife. Now, the reason I actually went with a slightly shorter profile than the KS is this. The KS is technically rated at 240 millimeters, but it always measures at 250 millimeters. 
uh, which is fine. But for people who are just going from the 8 inch models up to a 9 inch model, a 250 is a pretty big jump, even though it's only 10 millimeters than the 240, it feels substantially larger than 240. Now, if you've been using six or seven inch Santokus and eight inch chef's knives, going to a 250 millimeters is a little bit intense sometimes, and it can be just a little bit intimidating. So I opted to make the knife a 240 millimeter knife length. Sakata Takayuki has always been one of my very, uh, I, I, don't know, the word, I don't know if the word favorite is the right term, but one of my very most respected of the Japanese knife makers in Sakai. The fit and finish of the knives are always top notch. And uh, to see a knife that was made by them for me <laughs> is, <sighs> it's a little emotional. And um, yeah, you know, so all the details are almost done. I don't know what we're gonna do in terms of branding. There is no brand yet. And I don't know if Perfection will be a proper brand. Um, I think we're just gonna put by Ricky Tran on these knives. Uh, I think that would make a lot more sense. By the time you guys see this video, I would already be on the phone with Japan with the folks over at Takayuki and giving them the go for this knife production. So let me tell you what we're making the very first run. We're making 200 knives. I'm only making 200 knives uh, for a very specific reason because I'm paying for all of the knives myself. Now I have opted not to do a Kickstarter campaign because I have seen so many knife and non-knife Kickstarter campaigns just not deliver on what they've promised. I've opted for myself to make a product that I can afford uh, and then just sell what I have as opposed to raising money and then trying to make something. And this is more of a passion project more than anything else. But we're making 200 knives, 100 of them being the AUS-8 stainless steel and the other 100 is blue number two. And they have the exact same shape, same profile. It's the same knife, same size, but one is with carbon steel versus a stainless steel. The AUS-8 stainless steel models will be heat rated from a 58 to a 59. And then the blue number twos will be heat rated from a 62 to a 63. I don't have any intentions of putting these in a retail store because if I did, they would cost between 60 and $70 more than what I'm selling them at and maybe even higher than that. And so I wanna make these knives as affordable as possible. So that's why they're being sold on my store priced the way they are. Um, this to me is a dream come true to have one of the most famous knife makers in all of Japan, really in all of the world, make a knife that is custom made for me. This is just something I'm very excited about because Sakai Sakayuki is someone I never thought I'd be working with, you know, this closely with. And it is just such an honor to have the folks over Sakai Takayuki make my knives for me. And the very first knives uh, of all knives. And uh, if I use perfect, it would be just overselling this knife, but it is so beautiful. The proportions are just right. The grind is so nice. The spine is about 2.3 millimeter spine. Um, this is my favorite size knife. And so 210 is very popular and everyone uses them. But for me, 240 has been my favorite size. And so that's why I chose to make my very first knife a 240 millimeter. But, and so I know you guys are wondering, where is the 210 millimeter? Um, I am designing that one right now. It's a lot more difficult to design this shape profile on a 210 millimeter knife. So I've got a number of knives I'm working on. And as a matter of fact, I have been invited back to Japan in June to go visit with Sakai Takayuki and a few other manufacturers that really wanna do something with me. I really can't say for sure if I will be going to Japan in June, um, but I'll let you guys know because uh, you know I don't wanna be away from my family for more than just a couple of days. But you know when you go to Japan, you've gotta spend about five to seven days. Um, each time I visit a factory, it's a whole new city, it's a whole day of traveling, so we'll see. Now, in designing this knife, I wanted to have a 240 millimeter Gyoto with the Sabatier profile and having a wall handle with a custom made octagonal handle and keeping everything at under $200. And one package um, is really hard. Now, people have always asked, what is the perfect knife? And we all know the answer. There, there is no such thing as the perfect knife. But, you know, given the design limitations and the price limitations that I had, um, trying to get the best knife for your money at this price point, I think we are very close. So having the same great blade profile made in two different steels is gonna serve a lot more of you guys than forcing you to choose one or the other. Um, I hope that is a good decision and I hope you guys appreciate me doing that. Um, it does cost more money doing it that way than making just one knife from one steel. Um, I wanted to serve as many of you guys as possible. So that's why I chose to have two different steels made um, of the same blade profile. Without you, this knife would not be here today. And I just wanna say thank you and acknowledge you Again, I will have a link in the video description to this knife. Uh, again, I've only got 100 of each model for sale. 
and the first 100 goes to my Patreon supporters. I can't believe it. A knife made by Sakai Takayuki for me. <laughs> for me! Of all people!